Welcome to Bits of an Artist's Life. This is Sandy Hester. I feel like I'm about to burst. I'm so excited to share this video with y'all. I think you are going to love it. I started making my own sketchbooks several months ago. I have used them like crazy now. I took them on our trip to England and I am in love with these sketchbooks. I've got my own special mixture that I've used to prep the pages and I am dying over how good they are. So I'm gonna show that whole process with you, the mixture that I'm prepping the pages with, how I do the pages, binding them, how I'm doing the covers, all the things, all the tests, the things that I've liked, the things that I didn't like. Everything that I use and mention will be linked below, but guys, let's just jump into this video. After a lot of testing different paper, this is the paper that I absolutely fell in love with. It works perfect with the mixture that I'm going to show you in a minute. And I'll have it linked down below in the description. Now what I'm doing is just folding them. That way I don't have to measure and cut. Try to make some room. And do this on a hard surface. Because basically I'm wanting to, hey, uh, oh geez, the hair. Basically what I'm wanting to do is just be able to tear it instead of cut it. So that's what I'm gonna do. It's nice because this table used to be an art table, a kid's art table, and we got it for free. And it's our dining room table. <laughs> so I wanted to just make sure it's a nice, good crease. So it will hopefully tear it easily. Let's see. And then what I'll do is just fold it and that's going to be my book. So I'm gonna just do the rest of these and then put it together. I think I'm gonna cut it down so it's a little bit different size than this one because I've got this one. I think I'm gonna cut it kind of like this so it's just a little bit different size. That's what I'm gonna do. To me, the paper feels like it's going to be really nice. At first, I was afraid it was gonna to be too thin, but by putting those thin coats on both sides, it's gonna help with buckling and with the paper being just a tiny bit thicker. I think it's gonna be perfect. And I'm excited about decorating the cover. I'm trying to decide if I want to put a little bit thicker paper for the cover. No, yet. I may not. Because the whole purpose of these is to have a cheaper sketchbook, but also lighter, so it's not so heavy. And I think if I, if I collage the front, that will make it okay. I was talking so I can't remember how many times I folded this. And if it doesn't tear exactly right, I'm just gonna be fine with it. I mean, it's kind of nice to start off not being precious because it then it just flows through the entire process of using it. I mean, I, I'm kind of over that at this point in my life with sketchbooks that don't feel precious, even if they're expensive. Normally, because I forget how expensive they are. <laughs> if I like it, I don't mind working in it. I'm kind of glad I'm documenting this process, because then I can remember what I did if I do like this. This is going to be a nice big sketchbook. Okay, I'm going to carry on. Uh, I'm going to carry on 
and we'll see how this one turns out. It's gonna be nice to have this. Okay, I just had my first kind of mess up. You can see, I think you'll be able to see right there. I didn't tear that straight, but that's just fine. That's just not gonna be a big deal whatsoever. All right, I've got all my pieces of paper. I'm trying to decide if I want to put all the deckled edges. The deckled is where I tore it. I think I don't want them to all be together. I think I'm going to maybe, I don't know yet. I may just not even think about it. I may just grab this stack and start folding them together. And I'm gonna to try to do three at a time. Two at a time went really well. I think I'll do, let's get that where I think I want it. Actually, no, I should do it like this. Is that how I wanna do it? Oh, that's not right. Ooh. Also okay if all this is just a little off. It's just not that, it's just gonna be, you know, okay. You know what I mean? Okay, I hope this does good with three, cause, oh, I'm cutting off the deckled edge. Oh, hmm. Kinda like the deckled. Oh well. Or do I wanna turn it around right now? What do I wanna do? Ah, it's fine. Ooh, that did good. This is gonna go fast. Yep. Oh, nice, perfect. Awesome, yes. I'll save these for something. <laughs> I save all this stuff, it's ridiculous. Okay, make sure I put that on. I think what I'm gonna do is do one book, let's see, where are you? Here, this size, and then one book this size. I got a lot out of just those few pieces of paper, so I think that'll be nice. what I want to do for my cover. I've got, I grabbed some things out of my kind of collage bin, a uh, bin that I keep things that I don't want to throw away. And I also have these old file folders. That's not quite big enough, so that's not gonna work. So I'm gonna just figure that out. Okay, I have grabbed a piece of paper. I don't even know what this is. It's just something I found. It's a little bit thicker than this. And I think what I'm gonna do is just use it for a cover because it's still kind of thin. Um, but it will provide some protection. Where's my thing? And I can decorate it. So if I've done this correctly, I'm gonna just do the same thing like what I did with the others. Just fold it, add it to this, and then I'll decorate it. I think I'm gonna decorate it with something that I found in my collage basket, I think. Which means I really should paint it before, but I probably won't do that. Or maybe I'll just use it for color swatches. That could be fun to have the front cover as color swatches. I don't know. I, I don't like putting a lot of time and effort into it because I don't want to be precious about it. Oh boy, I'm gonna try tearing this one again. Okay, I'm gonna work on this and then I'll come back and show you the finished product. Okay, for each one of these, I've bound them a little bit different. Um, just kind of 
seeing what I like and works best. I think this one I'm going to do, it's called, I think the saddle stitch, but really the first way I've been doing that, doing it where I'm just making like little, well, kind of like, this is an old one. It's funny, I wrote filmed on there. Oh, there's my needle. But just simple is been working really well. I don't know, since it's working well, I don't really know why I am messing with that, but that's just what I do. I like to experiment. And I just do not mind everything not being perfect. I will say that again. I'm gonna put a few pieces of cardboard, I think, under here. Let's see, you're supposed to measure, but we all know I'm not gonna measure. So I'm just going to eyeball, I'm supposed to put five holes. So I'm gonna do that. One, two, three, four, five. It's definitely not even, but I don't care. And the main reason I'm trying different ways is because, actually, I think what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna use this old book. I feel like I was just saying something, but now I can't remember what I was saying. Anyways. Oh boy, I better be careful. Put that right through my finger, won't I? Yeah, I, I'm gonna stick this through my finger. I just feel it. If you are wanting a perfect way to do this, you do not need to be following me. You need to look online because I am not after a perfectly bound, beautiful sketchbook. I'm after something functional, something I can do quickly, and something that will just relatively hold together. See, this has been my problem. I've not been getting it right on the spine, which that's fine, but it, that has been bugging me a little bit. But what I'm finding is literally with every single one, I've not gotten exactly on the spine. And so that means I can just go back to my simple way if I wanted to. But I do like what I'm about to do. I do One of, one of the reasons I like it is because I don't have to cut a bunch of threads. I can't remember how long I'm supposed to make this. I think like double. I really should go pull up the video that I saw. <sighs> but I have a feeling I'm not gonna do that. I have a feeling I'm gonna just wing it because that's what I do. I have, well, that was a lot. If I have problems, then I'll go look it up. That is definitely how I do things around here. One of the reasons I don't want this to be like perfect, I don't want to spend a ton of time on it, is because I'm going to throw this in my bag. I don't want to be precious about it. I don't want to be precious about the cover. I don't mind that the cover like looks nice. It is going to get dirty and it's going to get banged up. And I don't want to worry about it. I'm going to take these on the next trip I go on because they will be lightweight and won't take up as much space or really weight is what I'm worried about more than anything. Okay, I'm trying to remember, did they go in this way first? I feel like they went in this way. I probably should go back and look, but I'm not going to. I feel like it went like this. You don't pull it all the way through. This will be faster than the first way I've been doing it. But the first way I did it does like, 
open and close really nicely. This is faster, so that's nice. Oh, see, this is already not, let's see. Oh, oh yes, I remember the lady went like this. Put this through and then she did a knot. How did she do that? Oh yeah, I think she just did it. Like you go under, I'll, hopefully I, I can find the ones that I watched. There were two that I watched. Pretty sure she did this. I'll link those below. Okay, please make a knot. Oh yes, oh nice. Did she do it a second time? I think so. I'm gonna do it a second time. That makes a nice. Oh, I forgot to tap. Oh, I forgot to pull everything taut. Oh, that did it. Okay. And then she went back through here. Let me get that back through there. And I think she said pull the knot through. Ooh. Okay. Get that pull it through. Yes. Ooh, this is looking fancy. Okay. And then she knotted this. Ooh, yeah, that's nice and clean. Okay, I like this. I didn't get that tight for some reason, but that's okay. She may have done it one more knot, but I think that's gonna be fine. Let's not go crazy with the knots. Okay, let's see how this works. Okay, I should look how not tight. Mm, I should have pulled that tight, but that's okay. I don't feel like that lays. Okay, that lays nice and smooth. Yeah, ooh, I like that. Yeah, that's way easier. I'm definitely gonna do that next time. I'm glad I filmed it because now I can watch my own video. Hmm. I wish I had done that same method on all of them, but that looks nice and professional. Very happy. I think I really like the size of this sketchbook. Okay, I've got such a mess now. I'm gonna go clean everything up and, you know, then I'm going to sit down and paint. I've been doing this all day. I like to put my needle on a big piece of thread and shove it in here so I don't lose it because I like that needle. It's like perfect. And I keep all my book binding stuff in this little envelope of stuff that I got for from a book binding class that I took a million years ago. Okay, I'm going to sit down and paint. I'm going to try to not be tempted to use my new sketchbooks because I want to save them for a trip, but I'm happy to have them. All right, I'm about to mix up another big batch of this stuff that I'm coating my pages with because I am loving this. I painted in this sketchbook this morning because I thought I want to see what I think of the paper and I feel like I'm dying. It is amazing. I'll show you a better picture of this painting, but it did not curl. It laid flat for me. I thought I've got to make another one of these pronto. Actually, I'm gonna make several. I'm gonna use all the paper that I have, but I don't know if I have enough of this. I only have a little bit left of this matte medium. I want to make sure that I know, that I know, that I know what I'm using. So I'm using water. I'm using matte medium. It does not matter what brand. It really doesn't. All I'm looking for is a little bit of slickiness on my surface. I like a, a paper that is smooth and that has a nice sizing on it. So it's a little slick. It's not like cotton paper that just sucks up everything. I don't know if that makes sense, but I just know the kind of paper that I like and that I buy in my moleskine, my large moleskine, and some other sketchbooks. I don't like it when it's very absorbent paper. So that's all I'm doing is creating a little bit of surface that doesn't sink in. I like that because one, it doesn't soak up and suck up your paint but I can get nice transparencies. Everything starts sitting on top and building a nice surface for me. So uh, I'm just using a butter container. I'm not using a ton of this Matisse Antique White. If you don't have this, you can create this very easily with just like white, even just gesso. No, no, no. Well, yeah, you could use gesso. And like just a tiny bit of like raw sienna or something like that. 
So I'm going to use up, I think, all of this. The other reason I'm using this paint, for two reasons. One, because I have it and it's the perfect color. Two, because it's an acrylic paint that's a little more slick. I didn't like it with painting with it because it looked like, uh, you know, plastic when it was done. I'm just all eyeballing all of this, by the way. It's kind of just a, it's like a recipe that you just go with the flow, you know what I mean? I like the cream because I'm used to working on cream paper, but also because as I'm coating, oh, I am leaking something all over the place. Bummer. Oh, I bet it's gonna shook this. Anyways, when you're coating the paper, it's easier to be able to see if you've missed a spot or not. I'm gonna move this so I don't get stuff on it. Actually, I think I wanna squeeze a little bit more. I'm running out of this a lot faster than what I realized that I would. This is about my fourth batch probably to make. Don't get caught up, hung up on stuff. Now I like to put it in a separate pan because this paint is very thick and I want to get it juicified and break it down. I have to kind of like ch break up the chunks. Oh, I hate painting like this. It just drives me crazy. So I'm going to break up the chunks, make it very watery. It's fine if all the chunks aren't broken up. It just means that when you do your your brush over the paper, you may have a thicker spot. It's just gonna be fine. It's just not a big deal. So I'm gonna get this quite thin. I should have maybe done this even in smaller batches, but I'm just basically breaking it up, you know, chunking, breaking down the chunks and adding water as I go. I don't wanna put a ton of water at the very beginning because it will be splashing everywhere and too watery. I really didn't even need to add, or th add the water that I just did, but oh, I tell you, there's something about thick paint like this. I don't know how people paint with it, to be honest. I guess you figure it out and people that like it like this love it. So when I first started with acrylic paint, that's what I did. I did use it thick like this. No wonder I hated it. And it looked like plastic. Oh no, I'm slopping out, see? I'm wasting my good paint. Oh goodness. Gotta get that back in there. No wasting paint. I really do want this completely broken down though before I put it in my butter bin because once it goes in there, it's gonna be chunky. I feel like I need like a blender. You gotta really work these chunks. I mean, look at that. There are just... I don't understand. So now I pretty much have a nice creamy consistency. I really could work this some more. Wow, I made a heaping mess. Okay, now I'm just gonna pour this in here. Could I have done this in here? Yes. If this was empty, I would have done this in here, but it wasn't fully empty, but it really shouldn't have mattered. I don't know why I did it in this. Okay, note to self, next time skip this step and just do it in the butter bin. See, I just get where I don't think too much. I just get in here and I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta make some more. I mean, I've got half the batch on my hand, basically, and on the table. Oh, geez. Okay, now let's wipe the hands off. I'm gonna squirt the rest of this in here because I know I'm gonna use it. Wow, it looks like a lot, but I'm gonna use it. And if I don't, it'll be nice because I'll have it for next time. Let's just take the lid off. Okay, now I'm gonna add some water. Again, I just, I can't tell you exactly how much. I just start mixing it up and it's a mixture between milk and like half and half. If it's too watery, it won't have enough of all the stuff in it and won't stick properly. I mean, really on paper it'll be fine, but I want to mix this pretty well. I have noticed too, if I do my thing like that and it's coating it, I know that that would be fine. I really know it most when I'm using my paintbrush and spreading, it should just spread like, like that. Instead of like, oh, I can only make a little swatch, a little swatch, a little, if you're having to go da, 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 instead of like, you know, like that, that's the best way to describe it. So there's my formula. It's been working great. The thickness of the paper is perfecto. Supersonic happy. Okay, I just did the other side, like I've done both sides of another batch. I've got them all drying there. It does not seem like many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
there's like 10 pieces and this is going to make me so many sketchbooks. I did want to mention that I only do one coat on both sides and it's quite a thin coat because of how thin this is. It's very, very thin. So uh, that's plenty and I don't worry about if I miss a spot. I'm sure that doesn't surprise you that I don't worry about that. But uh, you can see how they kind of curl up while they're drying. But then once they're, they've got a coat on both sides, they are just nice and flat after they completely dry. Then what I do is stack them and they just flatten out really nicely. So I'm just thrilled with it. I could not be happier with this paper and I'm excited to make more. So I have made seven sketchbooks total. There's one I have not covered yet. I still need to do that. I've not bound it or covered it. And I thought I would talk to you a little about the way that I covered these. I kind of played around with that. I played around with binding. I've definitely not noticed a difference with binding except for this one right here. This little thing popped out, but it's fine. It still works great like it's not been a problem at all it's completely held up it's just not been a problem I don't know if that was due to the way I tied a knot or if I was just rough with it or if it like got caught on something yeah I don't know so two of these I just used like a little bit thicker paper not crazy thick I think it was just maybe some old watercolor paper I didn't love and like collaged a piece of art on it like different magazines or catalogs that I'll have I'll stick them in like this bin with collage stuff and I thought those were nice these have gotten banged up quite a bit I took them to England and I don't know they held up really great I am completely in love with these sketchbooks I'm not sure I'll ever buy real sketchbooks again I still have a lot of sketchbooks to like finish like ones that I've bought but I am absolutely obsessed with this paper so as you saw in one of the videos, I also collaged one of the covers. Again, this is just a little bit thicker paper. I think it's that watercolor paper that I don't love. And that was kind of fun to do. I just used up pieces of paper that um, I took a Peggy Carl Roberts class and we did like a collage thing. So I just used those and that was fun. I was a little worried about, would you feel that? like the bumps, but you don't. So that kind of added a nice way to use up like scraps and stuff from, you know, another session. This one I used cardboard and I really like that. It does give some stability. I think I will use cardboard in the future again. And the way the weight of the pages and the way they lay, it just lays beautifully. It has a beautiful like wallpaper feel to it. As I flip and feel it, it just, I don't know, I, I, I can't really say enough. I'm very, very happy with it. And this is definitely going to be my new sketchbook. It absolutely just has a beautiful resist to it. Like a perfect, to me even better than my other sketchbooks. Then I also used a, so you know if you buy like paper, a pad of paper, it's got the cover, but then it's got this cardboard back. So I had a leftover one of those and used that because I thought that would be a nice like solid back. And how did I attach that? Oh yeah, I just stitched it right in. And then this has been nice because this is kind of slickety 
and I've been using this as a palette. So when I've taken this, I actually haven't even started the sketchbook yet, but I've been using this as a palette because it's slickety and it's just been nice. And I thought that would also be kind of neat for like a cover. Then this is my really large one. And I pulled a painting that, a really large painting that I'd not finished, that I knew I was not going to do anything with and cut it down and made it into a cover. So I thought that was fun. I was doing this from my coffee shop sketches and didn't finish it. And I thought, well, that'll make kind of a nice abstract cover. This is the largest one that I've worked in or that I've made and I absolutely love it. I've taken it to life drawing and I've not done a lot in it. Ooh, that's interesting. Why is that paper right there so thick? That is weird. I've got this weird thick paper in the middle there. Hmm. I wonder if I decided to just do like a... I bet I thought I was going to use that as the cover. I don't know. Who knows? But it's in there. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I probably saw it lying on the floor. Oh, that was wet when I closed that. So it's been great having all these different sizes. Let me put them like this so you can kind of see maybe the different sizes that I've done. I'm definitely finding the size that I really like. Now some of these covers are just a little bit different size. Like I think these three are all the exact same size. I really, really, really love like this format and shape. I love it. This is what I grab all the time. It's kind of my go-to. So it's nice because you can experiment with things. You can decide which sizes you like and make it as big as you want or as small. So I just could not be happier. This has just been a great experiment. It's definitely a game changer and it will be interesting to see over time how these hold up. I mean, look, I completely forgot to tighten the string and there it is just hanging out. Oh, maybe it was just because that wasn't taut. I don't know. It really doesn't matter. They're gonna hold up for the length of the size. It's not like they're really big. And you can see how nicely the paper lays. I mean, it's just like the perfect weight. It's very thin and yet it just lays absolutely beautifully. So yeah, great experiment. Okay, that is this week's little artist bit. Let me know if you end up trying this method and what you think. I know for me, what I think is, hello, wonderful sketchbooks. I absolutely love every time I pick one of these up and work in them. Like I don't think about the paper. It's not getting it in my way. The size of it, everything is just tailored to me. When I see you back here in two weeks, I have a very special Christmas themed, exciting video that I can't wait to share with you. So see you back in two. <laughs>